So looking at the Gibbs equation, we have uh, delta H minus T delta S is equal to delta G, the change of the Gibbs free energy. So we don't calculate the absolute value of Gibbs free energy, we're looking for the change of Gibbs free energy. We know that a negative delta G is a spontaneous direction. We want to slide down the energy slope to find the bottom. And um, we have some possible combinations for our delta H, delta S. So if we have a, um, a exothermic reaction, so negative delta H, and this is our favorable condition, we have a positive entropy of system, uh, also favorable. So we have both of them being favorable. When we plot this equation, delta G versus temperature, we see that we start off at a negative delta G and we just get more negative from there. So we are always spontaneous when we have an exothermic reaction and a positive um, entropy of system. For the opposite combination, we have an uh, endothermic reaction and a negative entropy system. So they're both not favorable. We start off with a positive delta G and this gets larger. So we're never spontaneous in that condition. If we have a exothermic reaction and a negative entropy of system, so now we have a favorable uh, enthalpy and a not favorable entropy. Well, the enthalpy dominates at low temperature. The entropy dominates at high temperature. So in this case, at low temperature, the enthalpy would dominate and we have a spontaneous reaction. So the delta G starts off negative, but it becomes more positive because of that entropy. And at some point it hits zero, and zero is the equilibrium point. Uh, and then from there, it goes positive at higher temperatures, so higher temperatures is not spontaneous. So uh, for this set of uh, exothermic reaction with negative entropy, it's going to be spontaneous under low temperatures, lower than the equilibrium temperature, then not spontaneous above that. If we have an endothermic reaction and a positive entropy of system, so this is a, a favorable entropy, but not favorable enthalpy. So the not favorable enthalpy dominates under low temperature. So we have a positive delta G under low temperature. As we increase the temperature, at one point we hit delta G equals zero, the equilibrium temperature. And then above that, the favorable entropy dominates and it becomes spontaneous. So we have um, at low temperatures, the reaction must go in the opposite direction. Then we hit the temperature where it's happy exactly where it is. And then above that, it's the temperatures at which it becomes uh, spontaneous in the forward direction. So if we're looking for the range, the temperature range at which is spontaneous, we first want to find the temperature range at where it is at equilibrium. And at equilibrium, our delta G is equal to zero. So we're going to solve this for temperature. So our delta H is T delta S. T is our delta H over delta S. So this is what we do to find the equilibrium temperature. Then we have to decide if it's favorable above, above that temperature or below that temperature. And if we end up with a negative uh, temperature over here, that means we're dealing with one of these. There is no temperature at which it is um, equilibrium. And then we just decide if we're dealing with a always spontaneous or a never spontaneous uh, situation. And then over here, we decide if we're dealing with a favorable less than equilibrium or favorable greater than equilibrium. So let's do um, some calculations. Mm -hmm. So if we have an exothermic reaction of negative 5.5 kilojoules, a uh, negative entropy of system of negative 20 joules per Kelvin, that we're at 298, are we spontaneous? So we're asking, are we spontaneous? Not um, where is it spontaneous? So to figure out if it's spontaneous, we just calculate our delta G. So we've got to make sure our units are matching. So 
enthalpy is usually kilojoules, entropy is joules. So I convert my kilojoules into joules. So our delta H, negative 5,500 joules minus 298 times negative 20. And the answer comes out to be a positive 460. And since it's positive, it's not spontaneous. So based on that temperature, we're not spontaneous. So now a different question, what temperature is this at equilibrium? Or we could be going for what temperature is it spontaneous? So if we're given what temperature is spontaneous, we still want to start off with that, what temperature is it at equilibrium? So now we set our delta G is zero, and we solve for our temperature. So when we do that, we end up with a, a minus 5,500 joules divided by the negative 20 joules per Kelvin, and we end up with 275 Kelvin. So that is our equilibrium temperature. And as we put it into our equation of delta H is negative, our T delta S is a positive term. So to be spontaneous, we want to make this positive term smaller. So we want to make that temperature smaller. So our spontaneous range is going to be at temperatures less than 275 Kelvin. So another one uh, asking if it's spontaneous, we're just going to calculate delta G. So we're given a positive uh, 20 kilojoules, so it's an endothermic reaction a positive 50 joules per Kelvin for the entropy at a temperature of 400. So to say, is it spontaneous, we just calculate delta G, we put our numbers in, in this case, we get zero. So if it's not negative, it's not spontaneous. So it's zero, which means it's at equilibrium, but it still means it's not gonna go anywhere. So it's not gonna go in the forward direction. It's not gonna go in the reverse direction. If we have a positive delta G, it's not spontaneous in the forward directions, but it would be spontaneous in the reverse direction. In this case, it's not spontaneous in either direction because it's at equilibrium. So asking where is it spontaneous, looking at our delta H minus T delta S, we see delta H is positive. The T delta S is negative, so we want to maximize that to make the temperatures higher. So we're at 400 for our equilibrium temperature, so greater than 400 Kelvin will be the spontaneous range. Okay, just one more of these. Uh, we have our endothermic reaction at 20 kilojoules per mole. 20 kilojoules, uh, we have a negative entropy of the system, minus 10 joules per Kelvin. At what temperature is it spontaneous? So when we're asked for what temperature is spontaneous, we solve for our equilibrium temperature. So we set our delta G is zero, solve for temperature. In this case, we end up in a negative value for temperature. We end up with 20,000 divided by negative 10. That's negative. So we never can hit equilibrium. Equilibrium is not possible for the system. So we want to see if we're spontaneous. So we just want to see at a positive temperature, is it going to be a delta G is positive or negative? So we'll pick room temperature, or standard temperature, 298 Kelvin. We put that in and we solve it, and we end up with a positive number. So the zero point is off the graph. We have a positive delta G. So the delta G is always positive. So this is not spontaneous, and it's never is spontaneous. <laughs>